Hi guys, I'm Ryan Houston and welcome to my Fly Tying channel. The channel contains hundreds of different videos catering from beginners right through to the more advanced tires and covering flies and patterns from all around the world. If you like what you see, stick around until the end of the video where generally you'll find the pattern description and don't forget to hit that subscribe button down below. Let's get on with the show. Hi guys, so what we're going to do tonight is a, an articulated streamer. Uh, and it's a really famous pattern from America, from a guy called Kelly Galoop. Uh, and he is really famous for creating streamers. And uh, one of his best known plays is the Sex Dungeon. And this is a mini version of it, so this is the mini Sex Dungeon. Now, we call it mini, but even for, for UK standards, it's probably still a pretty big fly. Uh, so we're going to end up with a fly here that is about 3 inches or so, maybe 4 inches long. Um, so, hook wise, uh, for this I'm actually using a ProLogic uh, carp hook as a C2 and uh, I'm going to use a size 2 at the front and a size 4 at the back. You can use streamer hooks, uh, uh, usually these are longer shanks and going to give you a bigger fly but as I said personally for my own needs I probably don't need it that big. Um, the other thing about it is it's a fairly straight eyed uh, hook, there's a slight downturn to it, that helps keep everything better in line. Um, so yeah, if you're if you're choosing your hooks, choose something with a straight eye. So the front half of the fly I'm going to tie with gel spun as my thread because I'll need it for holding in the uh, connection, the wire. Uh, but for the rear of the fly, I don't need that strength, so what I'm going to use is just uh, normal thread, and this one is a Techstream, it's a yellow 6.0. So, uh, baitfish tend to be two-toned, you know, tend to be lighter underneath, maybe darker on top. So, with that in mind, what we're going to do is we're going to use a, a white marabou blood feather here, and I'm going to tie that in. As the first part of my tail and I'm going to put a little bit of flash into that so what I'm going to do is I've got a, a strand of Mirage there's a crinkle Mirage I'm going to tie that in pointing forwards and fold it back on itself then I'll go to the back of the marabou here and I'll cut that off so I have two strands of flash now uh, in my tail so I'm going to tie an olive version of this, so I want something that's, that's barred olive, so I'm going to use one of these, uh, I don't know what you call it, like a chickaboo patch kind of thing. Um, so I'm going to look for, a feather out of that, and I'm going to tie that in on top of my white. I'm probably going to extend it slightly further than the white, maybe a mill or two, and leave it sitting on the top. I'll trim this off. So, uh, body, you want to make a, a palmered body. Uh, so, you could use wire as your rib, but I'm going to use just a standard gold oval. Bind that in down to our tie-in point and then I'm going to dub the body with like a tanny sort of ice dub kind of effect. I believe tan ice dub is the most sold colour in the world. So create a loose sort of body of that. And then I'm going to hackle that. Um, so I did try hackling with a, like a green grizzle, but uh, I felt it was too much green. So what I'm going to use here is like a like a cree or a gingery grizzle hackle. So like a, a saddle hackle. Don't want anything too tight, uh, so it's quite long in the fibre. I'll tie that in by its base at the front. Put on my hackle pliers. I'll 
put on a couple of turns at the front here and then what I'll do is I'll move backwards hopefully in fairly even turns I get to the rear of my flight. I'll take my rib underneath that. Just set that there for now until I get a couple of turns on, and then I'll just snap that off and continue my rib forward. Trying not to bind down too many hackle fibers if I can and get them to the front in five or six turns. Once I get to the front, I take my uh, thread underneath it. Sorry, I'm hitting the backboard here. Then I fold it back for added security and trim that off. I'm just going to give that a bit of a pinch. That'll just help with the sweep and the flow of it. And then I'm going to take another one of my Grizzly Chickabooey feathers. And I'll put that on. Like a wing. On this flight. sort of neaten up the head on it. Finish that off. And then I'll hit that with a little spot of Hopefully. So that's the rear part of the fly. So what I'll do is I'll take that away now while we do the front. Set that over to dry. So, uh, take one of the size twos now and put that in the vise. And I'll swap over then to my gel spun tie in thread. So, uh, to attach the two things, uh, you could use beading wire. What I'm going to use is uh, Fireline. It's Berkeley Fireline. It's a fused nylon. If the eye on your hook is big enough, uh, then you can pass this stuff through that and fold it back. And that will give you a bit of added security over the thing falling pulling out. Shall we say? Take that to the back to the bend and then put in quite a few wraps just to hold the base there because that's the bit that's going to take the, the abuse. And uh, I'm going to add a few little seat beads. I'll just pass the, the fire line through those, slide them down, and then we'll take the original tail fly 
Uh, now what I need to do is I need to pass this up through the eye. And then I'm going to try and keep these in line hopefully and pass the wire through the beads. That worked. And then I'll tighten that up. Try and keep that up on top. Bind this forward. And again then I'm going to pass that because these, there's another reason I was using these car hooks because they're pretty big eyes. Pass that down through there and bind it down. So I would then like to take a little bit of super glue. Coat that. That'll just stop that from pulling out and allows then the articulation for the rear part of our fly. So uh, we're going to put in some weighted eyes for this one. I've got a dumbbell eyes here. forward on the flight put these in at the front now what we do need to do is because we're putting a deer hair head on this thing we need to make sure that we have enough room in front of it to do that and then I'm doing sort of like a figure of eight kind of wind across this to secure it and once I'm happy with enough wraps on it, what I'll do is I will put a dab of super glue on those wraps to hold it. Let's just twist it up so it's straight. Okay. So, back to the rear. And we're kind of doing the fly in reverse. Now, you could put in another uh, white bit there. I didn't think it quite suited, um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and put it in as like a belly on the plate. So I'm going to take another one of these bloods and I'm going to set it in underneath. So it's adding to that white or light underbelly of the fly. And I'm going to take another one of our uh, olive grizzly ones. I'm going to put that on the top of the fly. repeat the process that we did with the rear of the fly so I'm going to put in my gold rib I'm going to dub the front part of the fly with the same dubbing mix that we had on the rear part so once we get it started we can twist it up that little bit tighter um, because we're having the deer hair head, we're probably not doing as long a section at the front. Um, I'm actually going to use a long shank hook, which I didn't. And uh, again, I'm going to use uh, another one of our Cree. that 
technical player. Put on a few turns and then power backwards. Take a rip up through that this time because the shorter section you're only going to get three to four turns. Tie it off the front and fold it back on itself. Some of these fibers that are in the way. Out. So, um, I'm going to put in a couple of rubber legs here. Uh, so I'm using this is sort of like a orangey, olivey set. Fold back the base of them and then cut this off. And then I'm going to put in this time one a little bit more bulk to it, so I'm putting in two of these uh, olive grizzly chickaboo feathers. Bind those down. Trim off the bases and then what we need to do is to create a deer hair head for this thing. Um, I'm actually going to use a natural sort of deer hair for it. You could use an olive dyed one if you want. Uh, but to continue with this sort of uh, two tone theme, what I'm going to do is I have a sort of a creamy white portion. I'm going to put that underneath our fly. So I'll flip the thing up for handiness. Set that in. I'm going to use these almost like a fake hackle in a way. Put on a couple of turns and then tighten it down in behind the bead there. Then flip it back up. And then I'm going to take a grey or a natural bit of it. Brush out some of the rubbish. I'm going to set that up. I want it to sort of splay across the top a little bit there. What I'll do is I'll put on two loose laps and then bind that down. When I come around, then what I'm going to do is go around the back of one of my eyes and take it to the front of the eyes so that I don't end up cutting my deer hair and then or cutting my thread sorry when I'm trimming the deer hair and then I'm going to put on a bunch underneath now I've gone back here to using the natural or the grey Put that in place, pull down, and then one bunch on the top should hopefully finish it. couple of loose turns and then tighten down into that and then I'm just wrapping all through that just to bind it down
and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and get it pushed back a little bit so I can get my tie-in thread in behind the eye and then finish that off with a couple of half hitches before I trim the the deer hair. super glue and this little applicator which allows me to get it tight in there. Just fold that deer hair back a little bit and clear the eye out before we trim the deer hair. Once the fly is tied, then we're going to trim the deer hair. So it's kind of up to yourself how bulky or otherwise of a head you want to, to leave on it. But what you should probably do is trim the underside maybe a little bit more so that you. obstruct the gape and what I do want to do is I want to cut off the blunt ends of the uh, of the white portion of my deer hair anyway because they're kind of unnatural looking quite like the, the natural tips under there out of it you can keep it that sort of upside down way or we can flip it over and use the curve in this direction and get a bit more shape to the flame. The other thing sometimes I like to do with deer hair to burn it. Now, don't set fire to your house when you do it, but I find it does if you're controlled with it, it can. Help you with the curves. And that is our mini dungeon trout streamer. So, thank you for watching until the end of the video. Please take this opportunity to hit the subscribe button down below. Uh, tell your friends about the channel and if you want to watch some more of my content then check out some of the uh, links that are appearing in your screens at the minute. As per usual I hope you enjoyed the video so until next time tight lines and thanks for watching.